All right. Fantastic. It's great to be here today. And uh, we had a wonderful weekend, had a great event Friday night, and then yesterday had some fantastic barbecue and fun and games and topped it all off with a firework display that would rival anything anywhere in New York. I'm going to tell you, that was a firework display. Holy smokes. It was great. Holy smokes. <laughs> hey, as you came in today, uh, you received uh, from our hospitality team a Connect card and also an offering envelope. So I want to invite you to go ahead and begin to fill those out. The Connect cards are just ways that we can pray for you. And uh, so we'd love for you to do that. Our hospitality team is going to get ready to receive the offering. But while they're doing that, Pastor Nick asked me if I would share just briefly about my experience with New Covenant Church. And uh, I started coming to New Covenant on a regular basis in 1985. I was a senior in high school, a troubled teen, uh, well acquainted with encounters with the law. And I uh, was hounded into going on a youth retreat along with our current pastor and several others of us. And we just had a meeting with God. I, there's no other way to explain it. The Lord in his merciful ways decided to show himself to us. And it changed our lives forever. And ever since then, everybody's been trying to run me off from New Covenant Church. <laughs> I've been on staff three different times. But in 1987, I was brought on as the first worship pastor here at the church. And it was an exciting time, uh, terribly exciting. Um, I believe, as far as I know, in the county, there was nobody else that had anything called a worship pastor. So people would ask me what I did, and I would say I was a worship pastor, and they'd go, well, what's that? Is that like a choir director? And I said, well, sort of. <laughs> And nobody had a, a team of worship, anything like that. And this one of the things about this church that I have so loved through the years is a spirit of innovation and a, and a spirit of pioneering. I want to tell you, in those days, we were considered some weird people. We were considered some very strange individuals. But I want to tell you, I'm thankful for people that kept on going, kept on pressing through the awkwardness, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. The other th uh, a couple of other things about our church I so love. I, I can tell you there is no doubt that without this church, my life would be dramatically different. Anybody else say that in here? <laughs> I mean, not just casually different, not just that I have a different routine on Sundays. Hello? I'm talking about the fabric of who we are. Radically different. And I'll tell you, that's one of the things I so love about our church. Is Our church is not afraid to get real and look at the real stuff and not just pretend everything's all right in our lives. But through this church, through the scripture, through the presence of the Lord, the Lord has really done such a work in so many of our lives and changed our moral fabric, the way we relate to the world. And I'm thankful for that. And... Um, the other thing I'm really proud about our church about is how we have become community leaders. A bunch of ragtag, old troublemakers. Somehow God has gotten hold of so many of us, and now many of us are in places of leadership to bring goodness and good things to the world. Not to take, not to see how much we can get, but to see how much we can give. And that is a beautiful thing. The hospitality team ready to take the offering up? I'm going to pray a blessing over that. Father, thank you so very much uh, for this day that we celebrate. We mark a milestone of history. We also look toward the future. You've never, you've never had us happy to just sit still. And Lord, we're thankful for that. We pray that you'd open up to us individually, and as a church, bigger dreams and bigger vision than we've ever had. Give us courage to run and go for it. Live large for you. We thank you for this offering. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give to your kingdom. You have given so much to us. Help us, Lord, to grow 
and to be big givers ourselves. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. As they're taking up the offering, we have for you next a video that talks to us about the history of New Covenant Church. New Covenant Church was founded 40 years ago as a distinctly different kind of church, a spirit-filled church. But what God has done over the last 40 years is use that distinctive gift and placed it within the body of Christ in Western North Carolina so that we are distinctly different, but that we value what God is doing in all the churches in our community. With us linking arms with the other brothers and sisters in this community, we fully intend that the next 40 years are going to astound the world and get God His glory out of Western North Carolina. The first Sunday in November of 1977, 40 people met in the basement of the Henry House at Lake Junaluska. In that meeting, they decided to start a new church, a new spirit-filled church called New Covenant Church. What's amazing is four of those families that were there that day are with us today, 40 years later, as part of our church. We introduced ourselves to the community when we moved into the cleaners building. The cleaners building was an interesting season of our life. The ceiling was falling in, the carpet was two different colors, no air conditioning in the building, and so we had to leave the doors and windows open, and we were a wild bunch. We served coffee and donuts and cookies after every service, so anybody that lived on the street would always come to our church, hang out in the back for refreshments. Everybody had a tambourine, a shofar, a banner, a flag. We were loud and crazy. Those were our early years at New Covenant Church, but they birthed some important things where we valued the presence of God. When we moved into the Nazarene building, it was like our teenage years. We were just getting our stride and figuring out who we were. We went to Tabernacle of David conferences and learned about worship and realized we wanted to be known as a church that cared about the presence of God. We didn't care if we ever got to preaching or not. We wanted to spend time in worship and know Him personally in every service. Some of the most impactful moments of my life were through prayer and through praise and worship inside that building. And it really marinated into our spirits and became a core of our identity and part of our values. In 1990, we built this building that presently houses New Covenant Church. It was during those years we really focused on ministry development, raising up pastors, adding staff, raising up worship leaders, writing songs and developing ministries. And it's during that season that our love for the community really came forward. Today, New Covenant Church is a healthy, strong local church, but she also is a community voice where she partners with other churches to make a difference in our community. One distinctive about New Covenant Church, we're the first spirit-filled church in Haywood County. And what that means to us is that every day we must walk with the Holy Spirit. We must experience Him and not just learn about Him through the Bible. That He's a person and He walks with us. Also, we believe in the power for miracles to happen every day in our lives. This gives us hope, it gives us faith that God is going to do something big in our lives. As we walk with the Holy Spirit, He's also convicted us about the love for the one. It's not okay if ministry only serves the 99. It's got to serve the one, the unique individual that has hurts and wounds, who doesn't fit in other places. They do fit in the body of Christ, and we've got to learn to celebrate that. We believe that every member of our church has a ministry, and that ministry is as important as any other ministry in the church, and they should be celebrated, resourced, and empowered. We also love our community. We love that we're part of the body of Christ that all 200 churches in Haywood County represent and that we have one part, no more important or no less important than any other church and that the church down the street's success is as important as our success. We believe in the advancement of the kingdom of heaven and that can't happen through just one church. It means the whole body of Christ has to come together. We believe in public demonstrations of love and serving the poor and the hurting and the broken by being part of the community and working with government officials and nonprofits and other churches to do things that one church can't do that God would get the glory out of Western North Carolina. As a church, we believe it's very important that we raise up pastors and worship leaders and missionaries, establish ministries around the world that from Western North Carolina, we can have an impact to the ends of the earth. We're committed to discipleship and releasing people to follow the ministry that God has for them. As a church, where we want to go is we want to passionately glorify God in everything we do. We want to relentlessly love people and we want to forcibly advance the kingdom of heaven. 
That is what we're uniquely called to do. And if that means the personal success of this church is limited in some ways so that the churches around us can find their space, find their success, find their assignments, that's what we're called to do. We're called to serve the kingdom and not our own personal wishes. New Covenant Church, our days ahead are bright. Our heart is right. We love God and we love people. His presence is in our services, our small groups, and in our personal lives. We have relationships with other brothers and sisters around us. It is going to be amazing to see what God does in us and what God does through us in the next 40 years. Well, I have the pleasure of introducing our first speaker this morning. Dr. Frank Harvey is the founder and bishop of Covenant Life Ministries, which is an international apostolic network of churches and ministries. He and his wife, Shirley, pioneered New Covenant Church of Clyde, North Carolina in 1977 and remained the senior pastor here until January of 2004. Prior to founding of New Covenant Church, Dr. Harvey served in his, and as an evangelist and a Southern Baptist pastor in Maryland and in North Carolina. He graduated from Fruitland Bible Bible Institute, excuse me, Fruitland Baptist Bible Institute in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and earned a Bachelor of Ministry and a Master of Theology degree from Christian Life School of Theology in Columbus, Georgia. In 1998, he was awarded an Honorary Doctorate of Divinity by Christian Life School of Theology. Dr. Harvey has ministered in hundreds of churches of all denominations throughout the United States and internationally. He is a father in the faith to many spiritual sons, including this one, and daughters, and has helped raise up and send out many into ministry. He ministers in Europe, Africa, Latin America, as well as the United States, and this morning he is here with us. Would you welcome Dr. Frank Harvey. Thank you. It's so good to see all of you here today, and especially our honored guests. We're so honored to have you and pleased to see all of you. My part of the program today is to say, why New Covenant Church? Why was there a need for another church in western North Carolina, particularly in Haywood County? Well, I want to address that. As Brian alluded uh, I was a denominational pastor here for several years in this county, and uh, I ran into the phenomenon that Jesus talked about, the difficulty, in fact, he said the impossibility of pouring successfully new wine into old wineskins, and pouring the new wine of the fullness of the Holy Spirit and a new spirit-filled revelation into old denominational structures I tried to do for eight years. It did not work. Jesus said new wine must be put into new wine skins that are stretchable, flexible, able to expand and move. That's why New Covenant exists. I want to share a scripture with you, and it is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And this was powerful. It was fundamental for us. Because at that time, <clears throat> none of the traditional denominations in America believed that there were apostles and prophets today. They all passed away at the end of the first century at, at earliest or at least when the canon of scripture was complete in about 325 A.D. But we see the word of God says that when Jesus ascended on high, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. And then he, the next verse says, And all of these were for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the stature of the fullness of Christ. That has not even yet happened. So all of this ministry, all five, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, are necessary to bring the church of Jesus Christ 
to the final product that he wants to produce. So, there was a need for that. Apostles and prophets being functioning in the church. But there were four reasons why I felt and we, those of us who gathered with us, felt there was a need for this church. Number one, <clears throat> there was a need for a new spirit-filled church structure and church fellowship in this county. There were old line Pentecostal denominations, but none of them were growing. Most of them were hidebound by rules and regulations that frustrated everyone who had any different of opi- difference of opinion at all. There was a need for a new wineskin, something fresh that would allow the Holy Spirit to have expression right here in the mountains of North Carolina. And so, New Covenant Church had to come forth. The second reason is, akin to the first, but many people who had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, been born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, were not welcome in their denominational churches. Many of them had been asked to leave. Some weren't asked, they were shown the door. And they had nowhere to go. I, leaving the denomination I was part of, did not want to stay here. I thought, well, I'm gone, but I do not want to start another church and get the name of being a church splitter. So I was, in my heart, intending to leave and go back to Maryland or somewhere else. But the Lord said, you are not at liberty to go because I have sheep here who have no shepherd. There's no place for them to go And they have given their hearts to you, and you are not free to leave. So that was a pretty clear mandate. So we began. No church building. We met in a home for five months. Then in the cleaners building, as we saw uh, for the next several years. Uh, Just all kinds of exciting things. There were some things we believe that all of the Word of God is for today. We do not believe in a dispensational Uh, teaching that says that only parts of the New Testament were applicable for that day and it's not applicable today. We believe that all the New Testament is for all the church all the time. And so we began to do that and with some exciting results. Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Lutherans, Catholics, everybody, a total cross-section. Many of you here today come from those different backgrounds. And you know, without God doing it, there's no way for those people to ever agree. Doctrinally, (laughs) theologically, or in worship or anything else. But God brought it all together. One of my very favorite stories of those early days in the cleaners building, as Brian said, the doors were open and the windows, we just, everything was happening. And there was a traffic light at the corner of Miller and Haywood Streets. And so people had to stop there. And in the summer, they had to listen. <clears throat> well, one Sunday, there was a couple, an older couple, who always went faithfully to First Methodist Church. They were on their way to church. They'd been going by there every Sunday for quite some time. That day when they were there at that stoplight, the missus opened the door and he said, what are you doing? She said, I believe I'm going to church here today. You can go on up the street and pick me up on your way back. (laughs) Miss Ellen Birch, some of you remember. She came to New Covenant that day and never left. Stayed there until she's in home with the Lord now. But she never left. Her husband, Roy, Stayed faithfully with uh, First Methodist. And uh, he would come for special things with us and she would go with him. But things like that happen. That's strange. Just get out of your car and say, I think I'm changing churches. (laughs) But God does all sorts of wonderful things. There were sheep who had no place to go. New Covenant Church was meant to be an inclusive place where young and old could worship together. One of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah uh, chapter 31 and verse 13. It said, In the days of the outpouring of the Spirit, in that day, both young men and old men shall dance together. Uh, That it's not a generational thing. It's not a racial thing, black or white or Hispanic or Asian. But all are welcome. I have said and fully believe that the face of every church ought to look like the face of our community. 
Whatever it makes up our community, that ought to be present in the house of the Lord. With no restrictions, no prejudices, no separation. We are one by the blood of Jesus Christ. Those who were born and raised here for generations, but also those that the Lord has brought here in more recent days. We need to be able to come together as one family, not insiders and outsiders. But that's what New Covenant is about. It's what we've been, and it is what we are. The third thing that there was a, said there was a need for this church is the fact that we believe that God had called us to declare forth the glory of God in these mountains. Uh, we read about, we could see in, on uh, television and other things, God moving in great cities and all over the world where the Spirit of God was moving. But I said, and we said, why not here? Why not right here in Haywood County, North Carolina? And we begin to declare the glory of God. We believed and we still believe that the most important thing we can do is to bring people into His presence. It is not me, it is not Nick Honorkamp or any one of you that's going to change people's lives. But it is the presence and the power of Almighty God. There is nothing too hard for Him. If we can somehow create an atmosphere where the presence of God is real, then they will get their needs met because there's nothing He can't do. Praise God. I like that. I like the fact that our God can. And we've seen miracles, awesome miracles happen in people's lives. Physical healings, yes, but even more than that. People's lives change because of coming into His presence. That's what it's all about. I remember preaching and people sitting back there shaking their head no while I'm preaching. At invitation time, they came walking down the aisle, still shaking their head no, tears rolling down their cheeks. They said, I don't believe all this stuff, but God is in this place. Will you pray for me? As far as I'm concerned, we hit a home run. I don't insist that people agree with me. What I do insist on is that we create the atmosphere where he is free to make himself known. And if that happens, he'll take care of the rest of it. The fourth reason for the necessity of New Covenant Church was for a church to be here that looked not just back and looked at the good old days, and sing about, and talk about, and yearn for the days gone by. But a church that set their face toward the future, and embraced our destiny, and not only ours, but the destiny of this county. I want to say to you, every one of us sitting here today, you have a destiny. Now, you've probably got your own ideas and plans, but more than that, God created you for a purpose. And when you find that and get into that slot and begin to function for that which God created you, there's such a satisfaction, such a sense of accomplishment and productivity and fulfillment that nothing else touches. So we begin to look forward, and I want to say to you, nobody in here, needs to be looking back, trying to go back. Your destiny, your future does not lie behind you. It lies in front of you. And you will never move forward into your future and your destiny if you're constantly turned looking back. That's why New Covenant is here. We're not yearning for the good old days. Thank God we did have some great times. And some difficult times. But I, that's written, it's done. What I'm looking forward to is what God has set before us. And what a joy it is to see the hand of God still at work. And for us to be able to still be part of that 40 years later. What a joy. Amen. Welcome. Amen.
like Dr. Harvey. And Shirley Harvey, would you come? And Pastor Nick, would you come? Thank you so much. Join us here. The staff and elders spent some time together uh, as we were planning out this weekend, just talking a little bit, and um, somebody had the idea. They said, you know, this has been the year of generosity at New Covenant Church. We've given all we knew to give, and they said it would only be appropriate that the last gift in the year of generosity that we honored Frank and Shirley Harvey, our founding pastors, and so we decided to do that, and we were thinking of what would be a great gift to give you guys, and uh, because the wake of your life is big... We thought it should have something to do with water. And then we just got back. We were in Ghana, and I'm sitting at one table. Frank's at the other table, and he's talking about how he and Shirley loved to go on cruises. Little did he know, we'd already bought him a cruise, and that we were here today to celebrate you guys and say, it is our honor to see God move in your lives. And we honor you for the faith it took to birth a brand new church. The sacrifices that you guys made that many of us will never even know the hours and the tears that you poured into this ministry. And I want you to know that the Lord, he is not only the author, but the finisher of our faith. And we honor you guys for the sacrifice you've made. We're so blessed that you're still part of the church, that you're still part of our lives. And on this special day, we just want our last gift from the generosity campaign to be yours to say, go on a fun cruise and enjoy yourself. So speaking of community leaders, um, I have the opportunity to introduce to you one of the most, in my view, uh, influential leaders we have here in our community. We're fortunate he's a part of our church, and it is remarkable to watch him in action and to see the amazing things that he has done since he has taken the office of sheriff. Would you welcome with me Sheriff Greg Christopher. God be the glory for everything that he hath done. I'm supposed to introduce this next video, but before I do, I have to say uh, to this church how thankful I am that nearly 10 years ago we found this church or this church found us. I don't know how we got the new covenant. We had been in the same church many, many years and Uh, We left our church on a Sunday and ended up at New Covenant the next Sunday, and we have not left. And I can tell you, if you just take a look, if you knew me 10 years ago, before I got some some New Covenant in me, (laughs) hey, I will tell you, I'm not the same person, and I praise God for that. And uh, my, my wife is the same way, and my, my children, I, to God be the glory for what he's doing in my children's lives, and uh, so I have, I have so much to be thankful for for this church and for what, uh, what continues to go on, and I'm supposed to talk about community impact. Well, I could preach about what this church is doing and has done for years and years in community impact. But I'm going to, uh, I'll save that and maybe he'll ask me to preach at some point in time again. No, I'm kidding. But (laughs) But I will say this. You know, we're in a place here that's very, very special and it's unique. For us to have the partnership that we have with like our Haywood County school system. You know, we're the only school system in the whole state of North Carolina that has that kind of a, a partnership and especially with Clyde Elementary School for New Covenant Church. And then, of course, our Pathway Center. New Covenant Church was so instrumental in helping with the Pathway Center, and we are so blessed 
this county is blessed to have the Pathway Center. The only thing we had at the time was just a homeless shelter, and it was at the end of its road, and God made a way to, in order to get the Pathway Center started, and uh, Nick Hunter Camp had such a, a huge part in that, along with our city leaders and our county leaders, Hey, there's no way that that could have been done except through Jesus Christ. And, and then, of course, you, you know, you live in the county that uh, has the largest jail ministry in the entire state of North Carolina as well. All we have done is opened our jail up to ministry so that people that unfortunately find themselves in that situation get the opportunity to hear about Jesus every day and sometimes as many as three times a day and and let me tell you we have over 500 people that has gone through our safety training that uh, we have uh, uh, that comes in and declares Jesus and into these people's lives and we are seeing people's lives changed we're seeing people reunited in their families and they are they're back getting jobs and going back to work and taking care of things that they're supposed to and it's all because of uh, of you new covenant church donna browning i'm sure she's here she has been doing this for 20 years and she took and just absolutely uh, I've learned a whole lot from Donna and uh, what New Covenant uh, started many, many years ago, and it just continues to multiply and get better. And uh, let me say this about this video. There's some people sitting on the front row down here that are very, very instrumental in helping our community, be it through the cities or be it through our county or be it through the state of North Carolina. We are so blessed to have people sitting on the front row like we do today, and I appreciate every one of those people because they're all personal friends of mine, and uh, they care about what is going on in our county as well as many other places. So we're very, very thankful to have people on the front row like we do today that we partner with. Now, this video that you're getting ready to watch is uh, some of them, plus some more of our uh, other community leaders and as well as some pastors that uh, formerly was with New Covenant. So let's watch this. Good morning. My name is Bill Hollingshead. I'm the Chief of Police of the Waynesville Police Department. I'd first like to say congratulations to New Covenant Church and each of its members on this great occasion. For almost 19 years, I've been able to sit and see what good things that New Covenant has done both inside the, this church itself and outside these four walls in our community. And I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for the coming years. My name is Joy Garland. I'm the town administrator for the town of Clyde. On behalf of Clyde, I would like to take this opportunity to wish New Covenant Church a happy 40th anniversary. Thank you for your kindness, your compassion, your love, your prayers, and your mission work for our community. Hi, I'm Kelly Herbert, head of school at Haywood Christian Academy, and I just want to share a few words um, to New Covenant Church. We are so thankful that um, 10 years ago you opened up your doors to us and you were a part of birthing the vision and mission that we had to start a Christian school in Haywood County. And I feel like over the years we have become family with you all and we've become um, friends and our hearts been knitted together for the same purposes to further kingdom work and we are thrilled that you're celebrating 40 years of service and we um, are praying for you and pray that you have 40 more successful years of ministry to the folks of Haywood County. Hi, I'm Cindy Sharp. I'm the Early Education Director at um, HCA and I just want to say happy anniversary and uh, thank you for letting us live here for 10 years and work together. Um, thank you for always making us feel wel welcome and um, like we have a place here and sharing space and just all the ins and outs that we do together and uh, we appreciate it and uh, just want to say happy anniversary and thank you. Greetings New Covenant Church. This is Vicki Hyatt, 
editor at Mountaineer Publishing, and I'm here to say thank you for all you do in our community. We work with between 50 and 75 groups, churches, nonprofit organizations, and are in a unique position to see who makes the most difference. And hands down, New Covenant Church and the members at New Covenant Church are always there when differences need to be made. So thank you for your time and your efforts and for being such an integral part of Haywood County. I'm Gavin Brown, Mayor of the Town of Waynesville, and I'm here today to wish the New Covenant Church a happy 40th anniversary. I think it began with humble beginnings in the Town of Waynesville, and having only two ministers proves once again how strong the church really is. Their ministries have been outreaching in the community and provided a valuable service to all of us in Haywood County. Truly, New Covenant Church has brought a joyous noise to Haywood County, and we welcome them and wish them a happy 40th. Hi, I'm Mark Alderson. And I was with New Covenant from 1988 to 1992, serving mainly as the youth pastor. The years that I spent at New Covenant laid the foundation of God's work in my life. I'm profoundly grateful to Frank, to Shirley, his family, and the New Covenant family. God bless you and happy 40th anniversary, New Covenant. Hello, Pastor Nick in New Covenant Church. Congratulations on celebrating your 40th anniversary. I'm Michael Abbott, and this is my wife, Sonia. We're the pastors of Lifeway Community Church, which you planted in 1997. 22 years ago, we showed up at New Covenant. And you took us in, trained us up, and sent us out. And for that, we are forever grateful. So from the Abbots and your partners across the mountain, we want you to know we believe that your best days are ahead and that God has even greater things in store for you. Hey, Ben Honorkamp here. I want to wish everybody a wonderful 40-year celebration. My wife and I were the first half pastors in New Covenant Church back in the day. Again, I hope you have a wonderful 40-year celebration. Greetings from Florida, the Sunshine State. This is Richard Marcello, my wife Darlene, and I are serving at LifePoint Church here in Tallahassee, Florida. And we just want to take a moment to say congratulations to the 40th anniversary of New Covenant Church. We love you, we love the church, we love what God has done there. And over the years, how God has supported us even through you spiritually and financially. And we're so proud to be a part of it. Have a great celebration. God bless. Happy anniversary, New Covenant Church. I'm Melanie Robertson, and I had the incredible honor of serving as the family pastor at New Covenant Church from June 2013 until December 2016. May you all be blessed and continue to move forward in all the ministries that Drs. Frank and Shirley Harvey began over 40 years ago. May you advance the kingdom of God, not only in Haywood County, but beyond for another 40 years. Again, happy anniversary. Hi, I'm Tim Blevins, pastor at Life Community Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. I served on staff at New Covenant Church from 1998 to 2000. But most importantly, I grew up and formed all of my spiritual foundations at New Covenant Church. I was there when we were at the cleaners building with the shag carpet. I was extremely excited though when we moved to the Hazelwood location. I felt like we were a real church with a real building then. I loved it though when we were able to move to Clyde and form the church that you're currently in now. I will always be grateful for New Covenant Church, and I'm so proud to say that I'm a spiritual son that was sent out from that church. I want to wish you guys a happy 40th birthday, and I believe the best is yet to come. God bless. To all the saints at New Covenant Church, greetings from Charlotte, North Carolina. My name is Shane Henry, and I'm very happy to be celebrating with you on this special day. I was there at that very first meeting almost 40 years ago at least i'm pretty sure i was um the first couple of months the church met in my mom and dad's house and uh, they made sure i was there but the love the ministry of pastor frank and shirley and everyone there changed my life changed the course of my life forever and i'm so happy to be celebrating with you today hey new covenant zeke listen me hope you're doing good i was the worship pastor there from june of 2006 until August of 2011, and we had a phenomenal time while we were there. I just want to say happy 40th anniversary. There were a lot of churches that started out 40 years ago, and they probably only made it about 40 weeks. 
but you guys have made it 40 years, and we just count it as an honor to have been a part of the ministry there. We send our love and our blessings to Pastor Nick and Tina, and we pray that the rest of your days will be the best of your days. In Jesus' name. Hey everyone, we're Robbie and Lauren Lanou. We're missionaries in the Czech Republic. We've been part of New Covenant since about 2010. And all three of us would like to wish everyone a happy birthday. All kinds of good news today. <laughs> Great. Well, we're determined to grow this church one way or another. <laughs> it's my privilege to introduce uh, the main speaker for today, our current pastor. And uh, I first met Nick in uh, 1978. We were in the cleaners building. He was 11 years old. A stringy kid uh, from Missouri, and, but I saw something in him and in many of the other young men and women beyond the outward appearance. I saw the hand of God on Nick Hunter Camp and uh, began to pour into him and saw him begin to grow. And he, this has been the only church home that Nick has ever had from the time he was 11 until the time he finished high school. He spent then four years in the Marine Corps when he was away. And then he came back, not because he was so in love with New Covenant, but because he was so in love with a girl that he had left behind here and he couldn't live without. So he came back to woo and marry Tina Davis. And as he came back, he came back into the life of New Covenant Church as well and uh, worked at, Murder, at Motorola <clears throat> and then on staff at New Covenant. As first as, uh, I guess, first over pastoral ministry. And Nick looked at me and he said, listen, I love you and I respect you, but have you lost your mind? I said, no. I think you're right where you need to be. So he, from there in different positions over the years. I want to say to you, Nick has been not only a son in the Lord and a son in the faith, but a friend, a colleague, a peer in ministry. And isn't that every father's desire, that boys grow up to become men, men who stand shoulder to shoulder with you, and he has done that, and not only that, but leads the way. Most churches that transition from a senior pastor, especially a senior founding pastor, who is there for more than 25 years, the next guy, almost unheard of, that he is not a simply a temporary filler. Because they can't get over the past. And if, especially if the outgoing pastor doesn't have the good grace to die or leave town, it's complicated further. But I want to tell you, this transition has been blessed of God, and when it came time for us to make a transition into a, a wider ministry, as Shirley and I prayed, it wasn't, oh God, where can we find someone? It was, God, which one of these capable guys and gals that you put around us? But the Lord made it very clear, Nick was the man. And so we have not regretted that in the last 14 years. And he has moved the church forward. And thankfully, we still get to be a part of the church that we poured our hearts into. And this is the church that sends us out. We're honored to say that Nick is our pastor. And we're honored to serve alongside of him and encourage him and encourage all of you. Thank you for coming, and it is with such joy and thankfulness that I introduce to you not only Nick, but Pastor Nick and Miss Tina Honorkamp. Would you stand as well? Amen. Thank you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Could I get a Ghana? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> a couple of things. Um, I was watching the history video, and I'm like, well, that's everything I want to say in my sermon. So I don't. So I'm going to wing it for a little bit, if I can do that. I want to take a couple personal moments. Hey, how cool is that hearing about Robbie and Lauren Lanou? <laughs> Woo! So I've known for a little while, and I talked them into holding it back from their parents until they could announce it today, and they could leak it last night at home, and it wouldn't get out on Facebook, and they did it. And so they were willing to put it on the video, so we listed it last, so I thought that was a good joy for us. Second of all, personal moment for just a minute. Um, I want to say that I get a lot of credit for stuff that I don't do. For instance, this weekend was amazing, and I didn't do a thing. Those of you who are in my world, you know I'm not Mr. Fun. I'm Mr. Productivity. I'm not Mr. Fun. But we had an amazing team to put together a bunch of fun stuff this weekend, and they did it with excellence, didn't they? <laughs> Wonderful job. I say that to say to you that when I'm walking down Main Street and a community leader comes up to me, they say, thank you, Pastor Nick. We appreciate what you do in this community. I receive their thanks on your behalf, but I don't do all that stuff. We do that together. And I want you to know that you do not get all the credit and honor you deserve. You are a beautiful congregation that this community loves and respects. And in some way, I hope to reflect some of their thankfulness to you this morning and say it's an honor and a privilege that I get to say thank you on your behalf when somebody comes up to me on the Main Street in Waynesville. I honor you for that. You do amazing things in this community. Second of all, I want to tell Tina that I love her and I appreciate all that she has done. I would not could not be here today if you had not loved that skinny little guy and saw in him and have been faithful to me all these years and walk with me. I would not be up here today, and I honor you, and I thank you for what you've done. There are few that know and understand the sacrifices you have made for this congregation, and I honor you for that. And lastly, I want to say something about my sons. I have two sons, and they grew up in this house. They grew up at New Covenant Church. And it is traditional for pastor's kids to be a little crazy, a little out of control, and to hate the local church and hate the ministry. That is not unusual in any way. But my sons love the local church. They love the ministry because this church has loved them and allowed our family to have problems, issues, and walk them out just like you do. And I want to thank you on behalf of my sons. One is sitting there this morning. The other one is playing with Zeke Lissenby at Ivy Hilliers Church in, in, Dow in Houston right now. But they're in the ministry because they found a church that loved them and let them be themselves. And I honor you for that. Amen. Thank you. Let me just take a few moments and talk a little bit about who we are and where we're going. I want to read Acts chapter 1, verse 8, because if there's another scripture outside of Ephesians 4.11, back in the day when Dr. Harvey would get up to preach, he'd say, would you turn your Bibles? And we already knew it was Ephesians 4.11. We're going to talk about it again. Our Bibles just fall open to it. This is another one, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And I'm just going to take a few minutes and, and talk a little bit more about what we've already said. And um, starting next week, I'm starting a brand new sermon series called Life After 40. <laughs> because there's a lot of sp examples in the Bible about 40 days or 40 years. In fact, I don't know if you knew this. But the number 40 is the second most used number in the whole Bible. There's only one number used more than 40, and that's 7. And so seven is the most popular number, then 40 is the second. And as I began to study the number 40 and look at when Jesus was tempted for 40 days, or when it rained for 40 days with Noah, or when for 40 years the children of Israel were tested, I began just really mesmerized by this number and what it means. And there's a lot of principles about the number 40 that we get to participate in starting next Sunday, so we're going to be talking about that but for today as you look at the number 40 it has a very specific it's the number after 39 I mean it's specific but it's also very general it means completeness 
It means the fullness. In other words, when Jesus was tempted for 40 days, the Bible says he was tempted in every way common to man. What that number 40 means is just more than the number after 39. It means he was completely and thoroughly in every way tempted and tried. And so as we look at that number, today we're 40 years old. We, we are coming into our completeness. We're coming into our fullness. This is an exciting time to be a church. And as you guys know, as a leader, I'm a ready, fire, aim kind of guy. And I am quick to jump out of the boat. And every once in a while, I'll have a second thought about the jump out of the boat. And then I will turn to get back in the boat. But then you crazy people have jumped out of the boat after me, and I can't get back to the boat because all you guys are out on the water as well. I can't imagine another church I could ever pastor because I need a church that's as crazy as I am, as dangerous and bold. And I appreciate what Dr. Harvey said. We're here celebrating the last 40 years. But I'm telling you what's right around the corner is more dangerous than we've ever been before. It is normal for a church. It's normal for an organization. It's normal for people who come from nothing and acquire stuff, position, money, resources, to then turn the page and begin to protect what they already have. That is not us. We will double down, we will risk it all, and we will be bold and courageous and walk by faith for the things that God has for us. We will not protect, we will not rest on what God has already done. He is good tomorrow. He's, I like to say this, and I know some of you English teachers, he's gooder tomorrow. He's going to be gooder tomorrow, and we're going to have to be brave and courageous. So here's just a couple of things. I was looking in the Bible and reading about Jesus, that after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he walked on the earth for 40 days before he ascended on high. And I was paying close attention the last chapter of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the last two chapters in John, and the first chapter of, of Acts. Those six chapters talk about what Jesus did for 40 days. And as I was reading that, I got really inspired. And I just want to, I want to talk about three things about who we are and where we're going. I know you already know them, but I want to, I want to reemphasize them because next week we start some new stuff. When Jesus walked on the earth those 40 days, he was here to do two things. And if Jesus, after resurrection, I mean, just think about resurrection was the most important event that's ever happened on this earth. The resurrection of Christ gave us new life. It changed everything. But, but that wasn't all. There was still something to be done. For 40 days, there was two things that Jesus did for 40 days before he ascended. The first was to prove that he was alive. He was here to say, I'm not a ghost. I'm not far away. I'm alive. I live here. I've, I've defeated death. I've defeated the grave. I am alive. And if one thing we must do as a church is to tell people that Jesus is still alive. There are too many people trying to tell us the problems of the world. And I love that song we sing, the earth has no sorrows that heaven can't heal. I don't like talking to Christians who are experts on the problems in our world, but they don't, are not experts on the solutions that Jesus brings. Our job is to bring solutions. So I'm watching. Jesus has proven that he's alive. He chose himself to over 500 people so that they knew that he was alive. The second thing is he came to teach the kingdom. He came to it. Now, this is the part I didn't see before. In John 20, it says that Jesus breathed on the disciples after the resurrection. He breathed on the disciples the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. And then Acts chapter 1, 2. Somebody put this in my Bible this week. It was not in there last week. But this week, I'm reading Acts 1, 20. Listen to this. So after Jesus breathes on the disciples the Holy Spirit, Acts 1, 2 says... Then Jesus instructed through the Holy Spirit the disciples about the kingdom of God. Now that they had the Holy Spirit, he could instruct them more fully. They didn't know what was going on. They were, you know, they were disillusioned when he died. And now on the backside of the cross, here's Jesus, breathes the Holy Spirit and says, Now that you have the Holy Spirit, let me explain some things about the kingdom to you. That's what drives me. It's not just local church. But the advancement of the kingdom of heaven in our community, seeing God's rule and reign and dominion leave the walls of the church and make a difference on Main Street and every back street alley we have in our community. That's what fires me up. That's what gets me going. Three things. Number one, we are a ministry power house. You cannot be a spirit-filled church and not walk in power. You can't have relationship with the Holy Ghost. I said Holy Ghost. That's old school. Holy Ghost. You can't have relationship with the Holy Ghost and not walk in power. 
He said that you will have power will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And when I look at Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, I see 3,000 people getting saved. I see God adding to the church daily. Then I see 5,000 people getting saved. I see miracles. By the way, Peter and John, Acts 3, lame man gets healed. How old was he? 40. True. Ministry powerhouse. One of the things we focused on in the earlier days was raising up pastors and missionaries. We really wanted to raise up apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. One of the things I like about New Covenant 2.0 is that we see the ministry in every person in this room. And it is in this that we found this out a couple years ago and it changed our church. And it was this, that what God has done for you is your testimony. But how you use your testimony to serve other people is your ministry. And because all of us have experienced God and have a testimony, if we're willing to use it, we have found our ministry. And we believe that every member of our church has a ministry. And so because of that, that's why we focus so much on healing ministries. We want to get you out of where the devil's had you, get you set free, then put some people around you and send you back in to deliver everybody that was in the cell next to you. (laughs) Ministry power house. I love that in our church we have community leavers and we also have what I like to call the freshly free. (laughs) They still smell like the smoke from the fire they just got out of and the Lord loves to use them as scouts to lead us back in to deliver everybody else that was in their pool. I love that we are a, a ministry powerhouse. We have to be a strong local church that takes care of Jerusalem. Number two, a regional influencer. And I like the scripture that first Jerusalem, healthy local church, then Judea and Samaria. Judea was, was, was Jewish, it was Israel territory. Samaria was mixed. It was mixed with, with Jews and Gentiles. And I love the correlation there between spiritual and natural, that we are called not just to influence the spirit world, but the natural world as well. And so Judea represents the spiritual, Samaria represents the natural, and that's why I feel compelled that the church cannot stay inside the walls, it has to get outside the walls. I had this morning one of the greatest honors of my life. You never know when it's going to come, you never know when something's going to happen, and just out of the blue, I had an honor that I want to share with you because I hope you will feel honored too. I was down front greeting some of our dignitaries. And as I was down front, I saw a pastor friend of mine, Chris Jennings. And he came in and he walked down front. And I was stunned. Why is Chris Jennings here on Sunday morning? Because he pastors his own church, Spirit and Truth Church. And I said, Chris, what are you doing here? He said, Pastor, we wouldn't miss this for anything. We shut down our church and our church is here today to celebrate with you. (laughs) Celebrate with you. Thanks. This morning on Long's Chapel's Facebook page, they put a shout out for New Covenant Church. They're celebrating today our anniversary because they're a kingdom partner with us. And what I love about our church is that the other churches love us, are not threatened by us. We make room for them. They make room for us. We work together because we believe God wants to do something so big. That if one church did it, it, wouldn't, it, would, it would never be big enough to, to represent God. And two, we'd probably take glory for it. But when we partner with other churches, God can do something so big that no church can take credit for it. And God gets all the glory for that. And when the sheriff stood up here and shared some of those testimonies, we've had a part, but we weren't the only ones. You ask anybody in Haywood County who flipped the prison, and they will say, we did. The power of the we. And we're honored to have a part. We have a voice for Western North, not just Haywood County. We have a voice for Western North Carolina. I'm honored that we have community leaders in our church, but we band together to make sure we declare the glory of the Lord in Western North Carolina. Number three, we're an apostolic ministry center. And that means that we believe in raising up ministers. We believe in sending ministers out. We will raise up pastors. Everybody on our staff will not be here years from now. They'll be sent to pastor other churches. We believe in raising up ministries in this house, like transforming you and exporting it. We, we are going to be more dangerous and more bold than we've ever been before. We've worked too hard without anything, 
to get the something and not use the something to do something unbelievable. So we will use the influence he's given us, the resources, the money, the, 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 uh, the capital that our influencers had. We will use those things to leverage the kingdom of heaven through Western North Carolina and to the ends of the earth. Our best days, I like what Zeke said, may the rest of your days be the best of your days. I believe that's what God is doing for New Covenant Church. We're not leaving our roots. We were founded as an apostolic center. We were founded at raising up ministers and sending them out. We were made to have influence and, and to recognize what God's doing outside the walls. I'm so honored we have government officials here today, business owners, nonprofit organizations represented here today because that's our partners and that's what we're called to do. I'm excited to be your pastor. I'm honored to be your pastor. I was sitting there yesterday. What a day yesterday. I stood there, and it just slowly dawned on me throughout the day what, just how beautiful the day was yesterday, how excellent the events were, how many people were serving. And then we got to the fireworks. And you're standing there, and you can, by the way, we should have a new cologne for men called gunpowder. I smelled that gunpowder. That's masculine right there. That's some masculine stuff right there, gunpowder. And those fireworks were going off, and I just stood there knowing I hadn't done any of this. I've been in Africa. But knowing that we have people here and watching you love each other, watching you celebrate each other, watching you serve each other, that's what church is supposed to look like. In Acts 2, the first part of the chapter, the Holy Spirit is poured out in Jerusalem, and there are signs and wonders. But at the end of Acts 2, the believers met from house to house and had everything in common and showed a love that grabbed the Gentiles' attention. In Acts 4, the Holy Spirit's poured out again, supernatural demonstrations. But at the end of Acts chapter 4, once again, the people were doing life together, sharing what they had, and loving each other in such a way that God got glory out of, out of their love and their koinonia, those work, walking with each other. What, that's, that's what we have in this church. I watch you love one another, and it inspires me as your leader. Our best days are just ahead. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday, New Covenant Church. 40 years. All right. So I got just a couple things we want to do before we close out the service. I would like to ask everyone who can to please stand. Can I get everybody to stand that physically able to do so? All right. If you have been part of New Covenant Church for five years or longer, would you stay, keep standing and everybody else please sit down? If you have been part of New Covenant Church for 10 years or longer, would you remain standing? Everybody else, please have a seat. Would you look around the room? If you've been a part of New Covenant Church for at least 20 years, would you remain standing and the rest, would you have a seat? If you've been part of New Covenant Church for 30, 30 years, please remain standing. Everybody else, please have a seat. I want you to look around the room at the people who have been here for 30 years. Amen. All right, hold on. If you've been part of New Covenant Church and you were at the Henry House 40 years ago, would you remain standing? Everybody else, please have a seat. I want you to see that Frank and Shirley Harvey, of course, are here. I want you to see Dr. Guy Abbott in the back, back there. It's good to see you, Dr. Abbott. Thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. And Tim, thank you. We've had, we have four families in our church today that were there back in the Henry house, and we want to honor them, and we want to be thankful for them. Dave Levins is also one of those people who's still connected to our church. He's out of state right now and couldn't be here, but he sent me a note this week thanking me. And so we just want to honor you and thank you guys. You know, there's some people in the room today that are not part of New Covenant. They've moved to other states, but they were here in a season to help get us to where we are today. We don't ever want to forget or not celebrate the people that helped get us to where we are. We have new people that walk in our new building, and they're like, I like this big building and all these great ministries. Somebody built that. Somebody sacrificed for that, and we want to make sure that we honor those people. I also want to take a minute. 
Wow, this last weekend, Friday night, Law Ridge Country Club was amazing. Yesterday, all day long. Do you all realize over half the people yesterday were not from New Covenant Church? I was like, who are all these people? This is awesome. And we did warn our neighbors about the parking problems and the fireworks before we did all that yesterday. A lot of people contributed to this weekend, and I thank you. But there's some people who gave every day for weeks and weeks and weeks to make sure that we all got to benefit. I want to take a minute just to honor them. And if you would just stand real quick as I read your name out. Rhonda Smathers, Jared Brackett, Kurt Furtado, Joe Killian, Deb Eisenberg, who doesn't even go to our church but just loves us, John Rowland, Rebecca Stanberry, and Lynn Galloway. Would you all just stand and give them a big hand? Woo-hoo! Thank you. Thank you. And, and I want to give a shout out to, to our team uh, Deborah Martin, uh, Herman, Dustin, Jenny. Uh, you guys did an amazing job. I, I, it was so fun. I came back and I'm like, okay, what's happening? You know, I got back Tuesday night. What, what, what's going down? This has been the biggest event of my life that I had no part in. And all my control issues were going, eh. But I kept getting updates that things were going well. And the team was saying, hey, everything's working out. And you guys exceeded all expectations. And I thank you for that. That. I came back and I said, Deborah, can you give me a heads up of what happened while I was gone? She said, well, this happened, this, 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 and this, and this. I said, okay. And then, you know, you're in jet lag, and so I wasn't paying attention. So a couple hours later, I called her back and I said, what's the one thing you're not telling me I need to know? And she said, well, we broke the budget a little bit on the 40th. And I was like, you know what, we're going to have a great weekend, and we'll talk about that on Monday. Let's just, <laughs> let's just enjoy the weekend. So. I, I really do thank them because you can't celebrate the 40. It's taken all year to plan this out. I mean, every week they had meetings to plan this stuff out, and you guys have done an ex- excellent job, and I just want to thank you for that. I also want to thank this morning. We've got some dignitaries here. I thank God that the Senator Jim and Davis and his wife Judy are with us. Would you please stand and give us a chance to honor you? <laughs> Amen. Also, uh, the Waynesville Police Chief, Bill Hollington, his wife, Karen, would you all please stand? Please. Thank you. And also, thank you for being part of the video. I really do appreciate that. And this morning, we have Beverly Elliott with us today, and she's the field representative for Congressman Mark Meadows, and she would like to come this morning and represent Congressman Mark Meadows. Would you give Beverly Elliott a big hand, please? I also want to thank Eagle's Nest. I appreciate so much. Terry, appreciate you and Mr. Greer letting us have this event here. Appreciate you very much. It's a wonderful event. Miss Beverly? I humbly want to say thank you for allowing me to participate in this today. As a resident of Haywood County and as a Christian, I have seen firsthand over the years the impact, the tremendous impact for Christ that New Covenant has made in our community and in the greater world outside our community. And I just want to tell you how thankful I am to be able to be here to celebrate with you and to recognize my good friend, Pastor Frank. And I've known Pastor Nick for many, many years as well and consider him a good friend. And just tell you what an honor and a blessing it is to be here today. And as that, I would like to present a flag and a certificate that's been flown over the Capitol in honor of New Covenant's 40th anniversary of making a difference for Christ and carrying the spirit of Christ out to a community, welcoming people in and giving them a place to call home and find Christ. Thank you, New Covenant. And here's to the next 40. Amen. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Have a good day. Bless you. Amen. Amen. I do not believe 
that we will ever stop with our generosity campaign. I believe it's become part of the core of who we are. How much can we give away? How much of our lives, our resources, our influence, how much can we give away? I believe it's become one of our core values. I don't know what that looks like starting next week, but I'm excited about generosity 2.0. Hey, as you leave today, you're going to receive a DVD, which has the videos we showed this morning, so the history video, as well as the other pastors and community leaders. So that's one DVD per family, but make sure you get that. That's going to be a free gift on the way out the door. And I want to just pray a blessing over us before we close for our next 40 years. I want to thank those of you who have come and been with us today that have served in other seasons of life. It's so honored to look around the room and see people that I used to do life with and run around with and see you back to celebrate with us. But this time we just bow our heads for a second and I'm just going to close us out in prayer. Father, we honor you and thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us. Lord, you've been faithful to us for 40 years. You've tried us, you've proven us, and we have found that you are faithful. And Lord, thank you that you've caused us to be faithful to the vision that you have given us. As we move forward, we just ask that you would empower us with your grace. I'm reminded when Jesus ascended on high, after his resurrection, that the disciples were watching Jesus ascend into the heavens. And the two angels said, why are you watching into the heavens? He said, don't you know this same Jesus in like manner will return one day? God, we look forward to the day that you will return and have your prize. But in the meantime, Father, we pray that you would rain down your glory and we'd experience your goodness on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.